So we set up our domain model, and this is going to be the place where we'll be storing just those single values. Obviously, the way that we're going to access the domain model has to be different to the normal things that we would have in Mendix. Um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a microflow. So let's go into my first module, and I'm going to do a right mouse click, and I'm going to go add microflow, and I'm going to give it a name. Now, the style that I'm going to use for these is always going to be sort of the same. We're going to call it um, um, get or create um, settings like that. Now remember that the purpose of this microflow is that this will be the only way that we will access those values. This microflow is going to be used to restrict access to that entity so we only ever retrieve the first row of the table. So let's create it. Now we don't have a parameter coming in so the first thing we have to do is we actually have to pull in the values from the entity in the domain model. So let's use a retrieve object. I'm just going to drop that on there. There we go, retrieve. And I'm going to open it up and it says, what do we want to retrieve? Well, let's retrieve from the database. And we say what entity. So which bit of data do we want to actually want to retrieve? Well, we've only got one entity in the um, domain model at the moment, which is global settings. So I'm going to tap on that. And this is the key bit here. This bit where it says options, because what we can actually do is we can actually say which particular rows of the table are we actually interested in retrieving. Now, most of the time we'll probably be doing all and we might be doing custom. But in this particular instance, we're actually going to be going first, only ever retrieve the first row of the table. So I think you can see that will enable us to actually restrict access to that entity table. So we can only ever get those single values. So I click on OK, like that. Now, um, that's great. Unfortunately, there's a little bit more that we need to do because it turns out that um, there are two possible outcomes here. This could be the first time that this um, microflow is run. If it is the first time, that means there won't be a first row. It'll be blank. Subsequent times this microflow is run rows or runs, there obviously will be values in that first row. What it does mean is that we have to deal with this instance of choice. So let's deal with that. What we're going to do is we're going to put some sort of condition in. And um, the way that we can do that is we can search for down the bottom here. Under decisions, we've got decisions, object type decision or merge. Well, we could use a decision or an object type decision. Let's use an object type decision. What an object type decision does is it enables you to test for the type of a thing, but also to see if it's empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that and I'm going to drop it on here like that. And there are going to be two possible outcomes. We'll configure this in a moment. If um, it's em if it's sort of not empty, we're just going to sort of pass it out so this app can do it, so that this value can be used in the app somewhere. If it is empty, we want something to happen. But what we want to do is we actually want to create an object. So we're going to test to see if that first row of the table has values. If it has values, we just pass it out. If not, we're going to need to create that first row of the table. So I'm going to drag that. I'm going to drop it on there like that. And this is one of these instances where we'll have two end events. So I'm going to connect that from there to there. I think we've got our layout. What we really need to do now is just configure this. So first we're going to do here is I'm going to uh, double tap on that and you can see open it up and it says uh, what type of object are we going to be dealing with? 
well, we're going to be dealing with, we say what kind of object, it's a global settings object. That's the thing that's coming in. And now if we hover over the little blue circles, there are choices here. So I'm just going to do a, um, I'm going to hover over this one and I'm just going to go right mouse click and it says condition value and I can go empty like that. There we go. So I'll just do that again. If you just hover over the little blue circle and do a right mouse click and I can say condition value empty. So if we try and retrieve the first row of the table, we test it. If the first row of the table is empty, we're going to go down here and what we're actually going to do is we're going to create that first row of the table and pass it out. If the first row of the table is not empty, what we will do is we will actually just pass it out like that. So that's that bit configured. Now for this bit. So let's open this up. Now this is going to um, occur if the table is empty. So what we actually want to do is we want to create a global settings object. In other words, we're creating that first row of the table and we can give it some default values here. So I can just tap on new and obviously there are three things that we can give values to app theme, process date and username. Let's do username first. What we could do is we could set username to be a particular value. Now, um, username is a string and we have to wrap strings up in quotes. So I'm just going to do a single quote. Let's say we said blank. Obviously you could pick whatever you like. Um, what that will do is that will create this row and it will give it the value blank. Let's do the same for the other two just to demonstrate what we're doing here. So let's do process time, process date. We can set it. Now if you can't quite remember um, how to specify a date here, which is a little bit more complicated than what we're talking about today, you can just use the generate button and that will work really well. So I'm just going to generate an expression to actually generate a date and time. That would be perfect. I mean, this is actually using a function call, which we haven't covered yet, but we will later on in the class. And let's do uh, new. There's one final thing. If you remember, we have app theme. And again, if you can't remember, or we haven't covered that in enough detail here yet, we can just tap on generate and we can say what value do we want the app to the app theme to be initially. Let's say light. And then we can tap that in there. And this is a little bit of syntax that enables us to use an enumerated list inside a module, but we'll cover that later on. For the moment, there we go. We've now um, got our flow. So we test the first row of the table. If it's um, got data in it, we're just going to pass it out. If it doesn't have data in it, we're going to create it. And we're going to give it some default values. Now, there's one final step that we have to cover which are these little red circles over here. This is where our microflow terminates. And obviously we've got two termination points. This is the one where we terminate and we've got a global settings object called global settings. This is the one where we, um, we are creating a new global settings object. In other words, this is the one where we've discovered a the first row of the table. This is the one where we have had to create a first row of the table. So let's go in here and what I can do is now I need to configure this to pass out those values. So I'm just going to double tap and um, Mendix is trying to be helpful here. So it says show suggestions control space. So let's just do that. It pops up all the particular things that we could pass out. And what we want to pass out is we want to pass out this global settings object like that. So we're going to retrieve a global settings object. If it exists, in other words, if we have that first row of the table, we're going to pass it out. Now, here's the name of the thing that we're going to pass out. But there is um, one thing going on down here. What Mendix expects us to do is to actually signal what kind of thing it is. And it calls that a type. So I'm just going to tap on the button here and it'll say it is of type global settings. If you remember, global settings is what we called it in the domain model. So there we go. Now, if we want to read this, what this is actually saying is what's coming out of here is going to be a thing called global settings and it's going to be of type. It's going to be a thing of type 
global settings. In other words, it's going to have those three values inside it. Let's do the same down here. Now, this is going to be slightly different. And you can see why if I just move this dialog box out of the way. When this create thing occurs, what it does is it actually creates a thing called new global settings. It's just got a slightly different name, but it's the same idea. It's the first row of that table. It's a newly created first row of that table. So that's what we would want, we want to pass out. So again, control and space. But now, if we look down, we'll see new global settings. And it's identified what kind of return type it is, so I don't need to do anything there. And there we are. There's our microflow, which will enable us to only ever retrieve the first row of the table. If the first row of the table doesn't exist, it will create it with those default values. But that's what it will do. It, it will find the first row of that table for us.